Hello friends, in continuation with our discussions, I'd like to now demo our prepack ERP system wherein an MSME can start to create their documents so that they can initiate a PR, a prepack ERP process, a prepack insolvency process. So uh, as we saw in the last video that there is a separate server that is created for every MSME for every assignment to ensure confidentiality and uh, security of information so anyway let's let's log in and see how what the system looks like so the moment you enter, you see we see a beautiful dashboard where you can have your calendars, some search bars, some basic information about what all is there on the system. On the left bar, you see that besides the dashboard, there is this data room where data rooms can be created and documents can be shared amongst specific groups of people. Likewise, voting is built into the system and the same groups can then vote upon on the fly. Auction is also built into the system. This is where the real action is. Now in prepacks, the corporate debtors or the MSMEs are expected to create a preliminary information memorandum which would have asset information, claims information, certain debt information, their financials, guarantees, litigations, shareholders. Now, um, so, th so this is more like a, a list of all the information that needs to be collected. We can import the information through CSV files, which will then show it on the list and no, uh, maybe in the next uh, video I will we will go into details of how the memorandum is to be created uh, then we go into services wherein we can these are the services that needs to be outsourced to certain um, to certain other professionals for example, for 29A verification, for applicant search, for asset valuation, for finances search, forensic audit, any other legal opinion, etc. And you can create a request for services from professionals. And uh, the system will then send a request on our other platform, which is open market. Mark, I will, I'll, I'll give you a little demo there. It will take us a request is created on our Resolution Bazaar platform where people can then file for their file their quotations and their details etc which will show up here then this monitoring is for how the insolvency professional is going to monitor you and what all do you need to be prepared for uh, for being monitored upon during the uh, the prepack process, which includes uh, cash flow monitoring, some tally analysis, some bank statement analysis, right, information from information utility, etc. But again, we'll go through this another time. So today we are going to specifically go through what we call as a prepack process worksheet. Now you need to be very very well conversant with what this prepack process worksheet is because this is really the heart of the system all the other all the other things that we see on the left are supporting services but the prepack process worksheet is the is the heart of the process so let's take a look at what the sheet looks like so when we enter what we see is that there are steps to the prepack process that uh, are envisaged in in the IBC and on this worksheet if we look at 
So the first tab over here says PP process. So this is the, the following steps that are going to required that are going to be undertaken. Then there is a scorecard, meaning the evaluation matrix upon which you are going to be scored and the other resolution plans are going to get scored. Then there are a whole lot of checklists that you need to be conversant on, which is a part of the PP process, but we have converted into the checklists um, and we will look at it as we move along. These are the forms that are required to be filled. So we have all the forms listed here and these all these forms are integrated. So you really need to fill your data once and your data will get loaded into appropriate forms. Of course, this is to reduce uh, any mistakes and also unnecessary data entry. These are the other laws that are related. Uh, of course, there are prepack laws, which says prepack regulations, which is from regulation from one to regulation 51, as well as prepack sections, which are, as you know, section 54A to, six, to section 54P, including section 11A and 67 and 60, 77A. Besides these, we also see the other references of IBC. So these are the other, because prepack process is a part of the IBC section. So the other sections are also included herein for quick and easy reference. Then of course, there is Information Technology Act and MSME Act and lots of other acts that needs to be, uh, you know, counted uh, to be referenced every time, every now and then. So uh, this tab refers to the law and of course there are timelines. So we'll go through what the timeline is and as we know that the that uh, prepack process has a stricter timeline and uh, and if we look at the full calendar assuming that it starts from the first of assuming that the prepack process starts from the first so there it comes under the prepack process can be seen in two phases the first phase as we see is shown in yellow over here so this is where the the uh, the, the process starts with a declaration and special resolution by corporate data. Then within 10 days, we need to see certain things. Uh, then on the 30th, we need an approval by financial creditors for filling of application. So this is the first part. So actually, even before this, so actually, the prepack process is in three phases, the way we see it. That the first phase, which is not shown here, which is really open, is when the when the corporate data, the MSME sits and prepares all the documents. And uh, then the second phase is when the MSME takes these documents to the unrelated financial creditors and they look at it and they initiate a process and uh, uh, the whole lot of activities that they need to do, including appointment of a, an insolvency professional looking at uh, the documents that have been prepared by the MSME and then the real process which begins uh, when an adjudicating authority passes an order for initiation and an appointment of RP and a very strict timelines like if it starts on the first which we assume that it is T plus zero the initiation process then by the third we need a submission of list of claims and uh, preliminary information memorandum uh, to be handed over to a resolution professional. Resolution professional to provide a public announcement for commencement. Then RP to return the list of uh, creators and uh, to confirm the list of creators and claims. Submission of base resolution plan of RP to the RP by the corporate data. So, you know, within two days, a whole lot of things have to be done. Then by the third day, the RP has to appoint a valuer. RP has to provide a list of creditors of each class of uh, uh, resolution applicants. Yeah. Uh, then by the 8th, we need a constitution of COC. By the 10th, we need objections of creditors, of any creditors by the supporting documents. This is regarding claims. Final item to be submitted. First meeting. 
then invitation of submission of resolution plan so as you can see this this process really accelerates you know and it has to be within these three months it has to be finished because this this, this the last month um, say in this case December is entirely for the adjudicating authority um, then we see RP to form an opinion on transaction audit then by the 7th he needs a last date for submission of resolution plan so anyway we will go through all these things uh, uh, gradually all we need to know is that for the time being there is a timelines there are legal issues then there are forms then there are checklists then there are scorecards and uh, in the scorecard as you can see there uh, is a score sheet and then we can actually see how the resolution uh, the MSME or this particular resolution plan is scored and then you can actually give it a particular score based on certain criteria and the score as you move the score the we can see that the the the, the, the average score or the base score depending upon whatever formula we decide automatically gets auto automatically changes and likewise the same sheet is then can be filled by other resolution applicants and their scores will automatically get collated and verified and uh, you know makes it easier for uh, for uh, scoring Likewise, we can see evaluation matrix. This is a typical evaluation matrix that we used to see, where there's parameters, weightage, scores, and again, this this all this all is a part. So arrangement with the with the creditors is the same thing we see here. Uh, you know, these are the new parameters. You can you can you can add a new parameter of your own, and um, once you add this parameter, this parameter can then gets added to the score sheet. And then can be scored upon of course you can delete it etc uh, then of course there are score logs as to how the scoring was done and we can actually see the logs uh, we'll go into it this is the technical part of it but um, so this is a this is a quick overview of what this whole system is as you can see it's a very integrated system it's in uh, that's why we call it an uh, ERP system not that it's an enterprise resource planning per se but erp meaning that it's a it's a comprehensive one-stop shop for the for running the entire process now we have been doing the same process for resolution as well as for liquidation where really the difference is lies in in more in this process worksheet uh, which varies from resolution to liquidation to prepacks to um, you know fast track uh, because the support services really don't change the data room services voting auction uh, memorandum monitoring uh, professional services outsourcing services they all remain more or less constant now, we are not going through what is there on the top over here because the whole list of things how this is this is how the system actually ends up using the users the groups the different roles and their permissions who can see what who can do what so this is how the whole system runs uh, then there are lots of configuration related to uh, you know how we want the system to be configured uh, etc so now let's get back to the prepack process worksheet and as you can see that uh, uh, so so let's 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 go through let's go through the uh, the process and uh, of PP of a, of a prepack system. So as you can see, we start with the prepack general definition, and we and we see that there is under regulation one, two, and four. Uh, this talks about short title and commencement, uh, certain definitions, right? and you can actually see certain how these definitions are. Um, yeah further can be seen so we we have these little balloons which um, so these are definitions and um, so uh, definitions on essential supplies definition on but um, the system really begins with the planning by the corporate data and this is where the crux of the matter is uh, msmes are really required to do all these activities before they can go to the financial creditors for their approvals for the approval 
of uh, whether they want whether they agree with the initial documents prepared by MSMEs and whether they are okay with an initiation of a pre of a of a pre pack process. So um, uh, over here, what we really need to see is over here. What we really need to see is the eligibility. So we have to start with drop here. Escape. So anyway, we can refresh this. Is this something? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we will. We are not going to go through the uh, the whole process of how the system works. Um, but for the planning of the corporate data, we need to first start with make ensuring whether you are eligible to initiate a PP IRP. And over here, what we see is, uh, of course, this is this is the entire this is the entire section 54A. And if we look at it, we have sort of broken it down to uh, checklists. As you saw that there are a whole lot, whole lot list of checklists. So, um, so we need to see whether you are classified as an MSME or whether you are uh, under corporate applicant. Uh, so, uh, an application for initiation PPIRB process may be made by the corporate applicant. Which means, so who is a corporate applicant here? It could be a corporate debtor. It could be a member or a partner, individual who is in charge of managing the operations, or a person who has control and supervision of the financial affairs. So any of these people. So whether what we really see here is whether the corporate applicant is are you uh, are you classified? Uh, so are you eligible as a corporate applicant under Section Five, Subsection Five, uh, defaulted as per Section Four? So what we see is that the uh, whether the default of 10 lakh is is there or not so un unless you have a default of 10 lakhs uh, you'll you're not eligible unless you fall in one of these uh, three or four uh, you know criteria you, you may not be eligible to be a resolution applicant whether you have undergone PPIRP in previous three years and whether you are to ensure that you're not undergoing CIRP that you are not being liquidated presently that you are that you're not that that you are eligible as per section 29a so um, as as so what we do here is if you if you see um, as you keep checking the checklist we make sure that you are actually um, you know your eligibility criteria is fully met and uh, Again, what is this criteria about? You click on here and you see if whether you fall in the category classification of MSME, uh, which means that investment in plant and machinery or equipment, in this case micro, is uh, not more than 1 crore or turnover not more than 5 crores, likewise not more than 10 crores and 50 crores. So when we know, yes, it is true. So you can actually say, uh, you can throw in a comment that um, uh, that yes, you know um, yes, eligibility confirmed. Eligibility confirmed as per ITR return, say twenty twenty, right? As per ITR return twenty twenty, and then you can say that uh, your investment investment sort of excluding excluding research equipment right is say less than one crore is is say 85 lakhs right and then you can say it is less than one crore so you've just made your point that yes it is true and likewise uh, your um, turnover annual turnover over is also less than right is equal to is 4.1 whatever 25 crore which of course is less than is than less, less than 5 crores 
and uh, you know that uh, eligible eligible confirmed eligibility confirmed eligibility uh, as a micro right enterprise is confirmed so uh, essentially you need to make sure that uh, you keep putting in your comments over here specific comments because this worksheet is is to be given to every msme every msme will have their own process worksheet and the process worksheet will enumerate all the will reference all the law and you will have an option to to add specifics as per your msme here and when you are done with here you can actually now for example for this classification purposes we can say yes classification we have sorted out now let's talk about a corporate applicant so if you look at corporate applicant what we see here is that uh, this is expecting the corporate applicant to be a corporate debtor or a member or an individual or a person so we can say yes uh, so uh, yes uh, uh, CA eligibility confirmed right since since the CA is the promoter promoter right, is the promoter uh, of the MSME right, with say 60% shareholding etc so uh, you can uh, we can identify yes that we have this 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 section has also been uh, sorted out and then you can sort of check this out and likewise you have to go through this entire list uh, to make sure that uh, we are eligible now this includes whether uh, whether the default is confirmed whether uh, to uh, confirm that PPIRP has uh, the the MSME has not undergone PPIRP in the previous three years, uh, and it's presently not going any uh, un undergoing any CRP process, and uh, it's also not being liquidated as per Section 33 uh, eligibility under Section 29. If we see eligibility under Section 29, um, now this this is this is this is an entire process in itself. And uh, we can um, we can actually go here and check for 29A eligibility, and then there is a there is a checklist, and then we can actually pick this checklist, and uh, we can uh, we can actually pick this checklist and we can put it uh, inside here. So as you see that in order to uh, in order to verify so eligibility of corporate data under section 54a requires that the corporate data to be eligible under 29a which if we click is expected him to be eligible under this checklist that he's an undischarged insolvent is uh, is not a willful defaulter and uh, he has he, he has no NPA account over for one year. Now this, of course, there are. Uh, this is a general 29A list verification. MSMEs are exempted from C and H, and uh, this can be sort of checked out because we can always say that yeah, this is not required in our case, but you still need to be eligible under the remaining that you have to be an undischarge that you that you're not an undischarge insolvent you're not a willful defaulter you have not been convicted uh, for punishment you're not disqualified as a director under companies act you're not prohibited by sebi for from trading right and uh, you are not uh, a promoter or a management uh, key management personnel of a corporate data which has a uh, you know any PUFE transaction uh, that you uh, that for this for all the following above that you you're not dis you're not you don't have a disability on the same ground outside of India and what about and the same about connected person so you have to as you see 
that as we move along, we see that there are checklists and there are checklists within checklists. So assuming that we have checked this aspect of yours, then uh, uh, then this of course comes later. But um, when when you when you take the uh, your basic documents to the unrelated financial creditors, that we have to make sure that ten percent. So what happens is that this 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 digital worksheet is not used. It's not used alone by the MSME uh, promoter or the initiator alone, but he the the they will checklist this part, and then they will hand over this entire system. You will MSMEs will hand over this entire system to the IP, and the IP will then you know continue with this checklist. So it's like you're hand holding uh, the entire process. So that uh, there's no duplication of work. So uh, assuming that you take this to uh, to the unrelated cooperators, they will further ensure that uh, that FCs greater than ten percent have proposed the name of a resolution professional, and that sixty six percent have approved the 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 process to be initiated, and then uh, whether you have given the declaration to initiate that uh, you know the declaration from the corporate data from the msme to initiate the process is there declaration by the corporate to not defraud anyone is there declaration by the corporate data to appoint a proposed ip the ip that is proposed by the unrelated financial creditors the corporate data to pass special resolution so if we just make sure that we have all the resolutions everything is is in place uh, all the all the entire checklist so this checklist we has been created Going through every every line, full stop, comma of of that related eligibility and section fifty four is obviously very critical because there are a whole lot of things uh, as you can see. So there's declaration to be given, special resolution to be given, and then of course base resolution plan and PIM. Now this is the most critical thing. So these are just eligibility factors, but base resolution plan and uh, preliminary information memorandum has been given, and assuming that all this thing is done, we then will know that yes, we have passed this part. We have passed the 54A eligibility criteria, so we have gone past section 54A, and we move on to the next section, which is approvals and declaration. So over here, as you said, the checklist was here, but then this this provides you with a list of approvals and declarations required. Uh, which is in form 6 and form 7 and also is explained in, in regulation 16 so if you look at the declaration uh, by the by the director promoter we see that uh, we would need to know the name of the corporate data who are the people uh, who are designated what are the din number what are the various addresses and uh, they have to sort of fill this form each one of them where they say that uh, that we will initiate the process within maximum of 90 days but you can obviously uh, put in 30 days 60 days and that it's not been initiated to defraud a person so this is an undertaking you're giving and uh, name of the professional name of the registration number so these various forms that you have to fill and this just gives you a sample form of course we can start filling the form here itself and uh, and then we can go to section uh, form 7 which is uh, existing so of avoidance transaction that we hereby undertake that either there is no transaction or if there are transactions then what sections do they fall under and what is the involvement etc and reasoning as to you know why they think that the sections uh, don't really uh, give the correct picture which needs to be undertaken uh, which needs to be looked into by the RP. And then, of course, there are declaration as per Section 16, which of course, again refers to Form 6 and Form 7, saying that declarations in Form 6 and 7 have to, has to be given. So, um, as we saw that we first verify our eligibility here, then we also do the uh, declarations here, and then we then, of course, make the information memorandum and the base resolution plan. So you have to make the information memorandum and the base resolution plan and only then and only then can it be considered that your planning by the corporate data is complete and we can go to the next stage of taking all these documents for the approval by the financial creditors 
who will then approve uh, who will then approve the the initiation who will also uh, check the eligibility and consent take the eligibility and consent to a resolution professional and of course finalize the fees and terms of the resolution professional and once this gets done then the phase 3 begins where the planning by the insolvency professional begins and insolvency professional is also supposed to do the basic work so this is phase 1 this is phase 2 and phase 3 is starts with the announcement and memorandum so this is really phase 3 and this is really when the formal PPIRP process begins so we can very easily say that planning by the corporate data is something like phase 1 right? so we can say that this is phase 1 uh, yeah, see phase 1 and uh, so this is phase 1 and approval by the financial creditors is actually something like phase 2 and uh, uh, and then uh, planning by the insolvency professional is also a part of phase 2 because uh, uh, this this is also a part of phase 2 and uh, announcement and memorandum is when the phase 3 begins so once the announcement and memorandum is done then we can call it phase 3 so essentially if we see if I were to just uh, refresh this what we see here is that planning by the corporate data is phase one. So this is this of course is a very detailed process. And then we go to the financial creditors and planning by the insolvency professional, both of them far or form the two, two and three here are both phase two. So approval of unrelated financial creditors and getting the RP into the picture and then uh, and then planning by the by the IP who will then be confirmed as, as an RP later on and uh, and uh, of course we'll go through all the details of what they are supposed to do separately right now we are more focused on what you as an MSME are supposed to do so let's go back we have verified our eligibility and we have checked that under section 54 that we are eligible on all aspects and we have details of all these things and a report will automatically get uh, will be generated by um, uh, so if we if we were to look at all the comments we'll see that the whole list of all these comments that are coming up whatever you are writing all these comments are, are being added and these are the comments which will actually uh, you know get converted into a report so um, so having checked that our eligibility we have checked our eligibility we have got our approvals and declarations in place now what we need to do is get the preliminary information memorandum which is given in under form 2 with the list of creditors under regulation 18 and under section 54 G so if we look at list of creditors these are typically a form 2 that you'll have to fill where you have to give a list of financial creditors, unrelated financial creditors, related financial creditors, unrelated operational creditors and related operational creditors and other creditors, related or unrelated. So a whole list of creditors you have to give under form 2 and uh, again uh, if, you, if you already have a CSV it can be imported into, into this uh, digital worksheet. Uh, then we go into information to be furnished by the applicant now we need to have as a part of the preliminary information memorandum, information memorandum ensure that you have your audited financial statements and provisional financial statements and that you have you to and that you have filled form p5 
authorized representative under uh, so you have to have a choice of authorized representative okay yeah so uh, essentially uh, for the moment i mean this 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 could have been somewhere else uh, but then uh, somehow it's a part of regulation 18 uh, but to make the, uh, you know, this is just to stress that we need your audited financial and a provisional financial statements, uh, which are very critical, and list of creditors, which are very critical. Besides these two critical things, we still need information memorandum as per 54G. So, of course, 54G gives a whole lot of things, and we have broken them down into, uh, as you say, checklists. So, we need a list of assets and liabilities and annual financial statements provisional financial statement list of creditors now these three we have already seen uh, you know separately but uh, debts to and from related parties guarantees in relation to debts right? pim is preliminary information memorandum and uh, partners holding greater than one percent stake litigation investigations workers and employee liabilities any other information so again uh, we see these as per checklist we can continue to check them out and the going through the details of what are the assets and liabilities that we are looking at of course we're looking at a table with at least all these things assets date of acquisition cost of acquisition remaining useful life identification number and uh, etc so it based everything is based on checklists and they are very specific forms very specific formats that have to be filled and uh, and once we have sorted all these things out, we know that yes, we are ready with the with the preliminary information memorandum, and uh, this of course is right there to uh, counter check, uh, you know, the 5G section right away. So 5G is right here, checklist is right here. How how and when we have filled these checklists is also right here. So everything is on the same digital platform and uh, and you don't have to sort of refer to multiple documents uh, so this is to ensure that you are able to sort of do most of the work yourself uh, even without uh, the need of a professional you along with your chartered accountant can start filling these forms and of course ips can come in to make sure that you are filling them up on track uh, so let's assume that the preliminary information memorandum is also uh, you know, you have filled up all the checklist. We have checked all the you know items on the checklist. Then comes the base resolution plan, which <coughs> can be seen under, which is uh, referenced under section 30, submission of a resolution plan, and PPRQ regulation 40 and regulation 45. Uh, so if you look at regulation 44, we see that the resolution plan should have all these following things. And again, we've broken them down under, under all these checklists. So uh, the resolution plan has to verify that, uh, you know, what are you doing about it? How are you resolving it? Are you planning to transfer assets to other people? Are you planning to sell assets? Are you, how are you restructuring your corporate debtor? How are you, you know, what are you doing with the acquisition of shares by any other person? Transfer shares, cancellation or delisting of shares, satisfaction, modification of security interest. So if you take a loan from a bank, uh, what do you want the bank to do? You know, extend the loan from the the term of the loan from three to five years, decrease the loan percentage, or curing or waiving of any breach of terms of debt that uh, you know at like we have not been able to meet certain uh, terms of the debt, and I'd like to have it uh, cured or waived reduction amount of payable to the creditors how are you you know what all creditors are you going to pay what you know, who are you not going to pay how much haircut are you expecting extension of maturity date of interest of debt amendment to the constitutional document issuance of security of cash and property change of portfolio or how are you plan to change your portfolio in order to make sure that you are becoming more competitive change in technology, obtaining approvals by the by the governments. But these are all a part of the resolution plan. Uh, and this is just this is just the this is just the checklist given as per 
regulation 44 of the resolution plan now this by itself is not a full resolution plan but this is the core of the resolution plan uh, of course we look at a full resolution plan and uh, but you'll have to be very clear with how you are going to handle all these criteria so let's assume this was the resolution plan and then of course there are mandatory contents of the resolution plan so besides the core resolution plan the other other content which again have been divided into uh, checklists so affidavit of eligibility yes i'm eligible under 29a uh, statement of failure to implement any that i have not been that i have not failed to implement any resolution plan in any other process that uh, that uh, there's no false information that i have given which might lead to my inelig ineligibility these are undertakings etc term of the implementation of plan management control adequate means of supervision implementation schedule addressal of cause of default flexibility and viability of plan provision for effective implementation so as you can see there are all these things provision for approvals capability of resolution applicant to implement the plan statement of dealing of interest how have you dealt with all the interested stakeholders operational creditors uh, will be paid over priority or dissenting financial creditors will be paid uh, in priority so likewise we saw the in the, under regulation 44 and regulation 45 two basic things as to what this resolution plan is now there is another there is another worksheet which sort of has a full resolution plan and it has a, a, a templated resolution plan uh, which will already have uh, you know all these sections pre-filled to some extent and the other specifically you'll have to fill them up and of course we have to ensure that section 30 which is the section 30 of the IBC not of uh, chapter 3a of PP prepack alone but uh, over here as you see that uh, as you see that uh, we have uh, how the resolution plan how the resolution applicant is to fill the the plan the point being that section 30 30 section 2 in particular that you have to that you have provided for payments of the resolution process that you provided for payments of the debt to the operational creditors in such a manner which will not be less than the liquidation uh, process of section 53 so section 53 gets referenced here the amount that would be paid to such creditors uh, in accordance with priority etc uh, etc et so uh, we have to look at uh, section 30 as well when we are discussing resolution plan <clears throat> so now just to complete phase one which is being planned by the corporate data they have to undergo at least these four specific tasks before they can approach they are going to get into section phase two and go to the financial creditors and the insolvency professional to do the phase two part of the process and the phase three part of the process begins after the uh, the application the the PPIRP process is formally initiated by the by the adjudicating authority which uh, is by which begins with the public announcement and the memorandum and then the planning by the resolution professional so this is the insolvency professional this is the resolution professional so planning and implementation by the resolution professional also is all a part of phase three if I may add over here so this is a part of phase 3 so as you can see this is all a part of phase 3 and uh, then the process and management uh, also is part of phase 3 and uh, then the resolution process also is really how the resolution is actually taking place is also part of phase three and plan approval by the coc is also a part of phase three okay 
is also part of phase 3 and uh, and having done all these plan approval and application plan approval and then application and appeals now this is uh, this can be this can be seen as a part of phase 4 application application and appeals so this is a part of phase 4 because this is application to application to AA actually so this is an application to the adjudicating authority which is part of phase 4 and uh, and uh, if we if we were to refresh this so what we see here is So what we see here is that uh, let's go over it again. If there's a pre-packed general definition, so we'll not bother about this. We start with the approvals, which is really phase one, if not phase two. Now this has to be phase one. Oh no, this is phase one. Why did that not come here? Yeah. Okay. So phase one is with this planning by the corporate debtor. Phase two is approval by the financial creditors and planning by the insolvency professional. So eligibility and consent of the IP, not RP. Eligibility and consent of the IP and fees and terms of the IP. So, so this is phase two and this is also and then the insolvency professional has to start working on some basic things reportings and everything and uh, of course uh, there are other phases so what we have discussed here is really phase one which is really the most critical part as an msme you have to make sure that the phase one is completed by you before you can go to phase two so how we help is that uh, uh that we we help you prepare this digital sheet so it's you your chartered accountant or your company secretary or whosoever else is a part of your team and uh, and uh, we as resolution bazaar or one of our members one of our team members of the resolution bazaar will be uh, will be appointed allocated to you and we will help you fill the digital sheet so you will really be doing all the work we will be there just to monitor and ensure that you are on the right track and if there are all the questions and queries that you have as we move along that we we uh, we help you fulfill and any anything else that is required because uh, sharing of data is required at any point in time likewise voting is required every now and then uh, auction is not required per se memorandum needs to be filled right away services also are required immediately uh, because when you are filling all these things you just might have to uh, ensure that uh, some form of valuation and um, uh, forensic audit is also being done before you fill in your approvals and before you put in your uh, put in the numbers into the base resolution plan they have to base on valuation and uh, some part some type of forensic internal or external um, so essentially what we are trying to do here is uh, of course we are not going into details because if i were to start explaining all the other phases which i will do in uh, due course but that is going to take um, hours to just explain how this whole process is running. So right now, all we are trying to say is that in case you are interested, then this is what you really need to be doing. And uh, we are going to uh, prepare a specific server. As you saw, this, this is a complete, so this is going to be your personal um, uh, portal of where you actually begin to start working so we provide you with the technology we provide you with the worksheets we provide you with with the uh, with the with the professional advice on the side while 
you fill the forms while you collect the data while you do all the legwork and uh, thereby the reducing cost you know substantially for your phase one because if you were to ask us to do this whole phase one process for you to fill all the forms etc now that's obviously going to be very expensive but since we expect you to do it and how do we handhold you while you fill the forms etc so we, we 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 come in here where we also come in here in phase two and uh, to make sure that the 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 financial creditors and the insolvency professional etc whatever they want they have no issues and how do we resolve their uh, uh, you know um, their reservations and uh, because only if you cross your phase one and you cross your phase two will you even enter phase three and uh, only when you enter phase three will the process begin so it's not a simple process a pretty tedious process as you can see and everything has to be sort of uh, you know within these given timelines and within these given laws and of course specific forms and the whole bunch of checklists that you saw there are actually checklists over here so um, there are a whole list of checklists that come in here. Now these are the same checklists that are referenced under those processes that I showed you earlier. And then how do we help the how do we help create an evaluation matrix, which really depends upon uh, you know what what your what your uh, resolution plan and your information memorandum is about. And this is how we sort of render how do we extract the the, the relevant aspects which need to be resolved and of course uh, score sheet will ensure that how you're scored to make sure that you get your maximum number of score etc and then uh, the plan is that we can if we can get a similar uh, you know we have to hand over a, another set of this uh, you know blank sheet to the resolution applicants from there for the, for them to fill only those relevant portions so that all these plans can be then automatically compared by the system and then based upon comparison uh, we uh, it's 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 going to be open people will see we will receive it's like a resolution plan it's like a digital resolution plan which has a specific format and everybody's filling the same format and of course they have the ability to uh, put in um, their uh, their extra information their own creativity that they would like to bring into the resolution plan outside of the formatted uh, plan uh, which can be uh, you know handled separately but uh, so uh, so uh, so i believe it's all almost one one hour that uh, you know i've been explaining just the phase one part of it and uh, of course, phase two, phase three, etc., uh, will go substantially uh, later. You can also uh, see. Uh, so this is this is an open sheet. Actually, you can actually add comments and do other things over here. But uh, 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 there are a part of this worksheet. You can see. Uh, you can reference the worksheet over here. And if you were to go to resolutionbazaar.com and if you were to uh, register yourself. And uh, if you were to go to the prepack worksheet over here, you will see a copy of the worksheet. Of course, it will not save for you. There are no ways you can add comments. So there's nothing you can do, but you can take a look as to what, what we're talking about. But this is, uh, there must be some lag between this sheet because this must be, uh, you know, this could be a slightly different sheet than, than what we see here. So this is, this gets updated specific to uh, the requirement of the MSME, whereas this is a, this is just a copy of the general sheet that we see here. So, um, so what we see here is, uh, so let me stop uh, this uh, this uh, uh, video here and uh, allow you to uh, digest whatever has been spoken, whatever we have discussed till date. And uh, of course, you're free to call me. Uh, if you were to see that uh, you can you can go to resolution bazaar over here and uh, you can see that MSMEs are suffering greatly and we are offering you know free consultation to select MSMEs and this is my 
my uh, contact email and even my telephone number uh, so you could call me here and we could uh, help you set this set for you and you can start exploring the possibility of uh, a prepack process understand the in details all that is required and uh, everything is more or less self -explan explanatory here because the way we have made this sheet for you and um, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you so so yeah. so goodbye for now uh, and we hope to we hope to see you we hope to hear from you soon thank you